today we're going to be talking about part one of the overall topic of using point of care ultrasound to evaluate for volume status and mechanisms of hypotension. For part one, we'll be specifically focusing on IVC diameter and collapsibility. So it's been shown that the diameter of the IVC um, can accurately predict uh, central venous pressures uh, as uh, correlates uh, with CVP measurements from traditional catheters. The way this is done is by assessing the diameter of the IVC in a standard 2 deep image picture or using the M mode uh, modality uh, alongside that. I have to tell you, um, it's very important to realize uh, that the use of the IVC diameter is simply an ability to use to help give you a surrogate for CVP. And it's important to realize um, that assessment of central venous pressure um, does not indicate volume responsiveness. In fact, uh, the idea of determining uh, where somebody is on their frank starting curve uh, to relate to CVP uh, has been widely uh, uh, reported to be not accurate. Um, in addition, uh, the ability of using CVP to prevent periods of hypovolemia versus hypervolemia has also been shown to be wildly inaccurate. And again, we want to try to identify patients in this target zone, of which they're not hypovolemic or, high, or fluid overloaded, um, going back into the idea of the frank startling curve, positioning them such uh, that they've maximized their stroke volume without getting unnecessary preload. CVP, uh, it, uh, its ability uh, to identify patients on their frank startling curve and get them to this point right here, um, has been shown to be wildly inaccurate. Many, many studies, as the one shown here, have demonstrated that CVP, in fact, um, has not been able to predict whether somebody has uh, an excess or deficit in fluid and does not indicate uh, whether or not they're responsive uh, to giving fluid. And responsive being, again, that they're at the steep part of the frank starling curve, such that by giving that volume, uh, you're increasing their, for, uh, their cardiac output or stroke volume. So again, big limiter, again, the fact that many, many uh, studies have now indicated that CVP should not be used to make clinical decisions regarding fluid management. Um, so a big disclaimer with that. But uh, the idea of using ultrasound to uh, help identify what someone's right atrial or CVP pressures are um, is a uh, potential useful technique, again, with the understanding that all we're trying to use with ultrasound is to get an idea of the patient's right atrial pressures or CVP. So how do we, how we're going to be placing the ultrasound uh, probe is identifying the right ultrasound probe that will allow us to have the appropriate depth of penetration and then placing that in the acoustic window that will give us the ultrasound plane as shown in this cartoon here to insinate the IVC as it enters into the right atrium. So first, when it comes to the appropriate probe position, or excuse me, the appropriate ultrasound probe, we need to use either the curved linear or the cardiac um, phased array low frequency probes. So again, these are our low frequency probes. Either the abdominal or the cardiac probe will be appropriate simply because we are doing an abdominal exam. And how we want to have the probe placed is in the subxiphoid space with the indicator aiming at the 12 o'clock position, again with the idea that it's allowing us to have our ultrasound plane um, uh, to get a long axis view of the IVC emptying into the right atrium. So the indicator should be aiming at the 12 o'clock position with, again, either the low-frequency curve linear probe or the low-frequency cardiac phase array probe. The 12 o'clock position is based on the reference of using the head or the nose as the 12 o'clock marker. <clears throat> so with this ultrasound image, what we should be able to visualize is the IVC in long axis, the intrahepatic veins, uh, the upper abdominal aorta uh, should not be usually in the same image uh, as the IVC, uh, but we'll talk about how the strategy of identifying that to differentiate from the IVC is key. We'll talk about that when we get to the examination itself. Um, the key thing again we're looking for is to look at the IVC diameter and to see the percent that it collapses based on the respiratory cycle. You can imagine as your pressure changes in your in your thorax, that's going to um, impede or, or enhance the, the forward flow of uh, from the IVC, uh, and the degree in which uh, that affects the diameter of the IVC uh, is an important um, uh, evaluation to evaluate for uh, someone's correlation between what we're seeing with ultrasound to the actual estimation of the patient's CVP. Traditionally, you want to uh, make sure that your ultrasound image 
is two centimeters distal to the entrance of the right atrium, um, and we'll talk about the reasons for that um, in the subsequent slides. We'll also talk about the use of M mode uh, as well. So here's a cartoon again of showing where ultrasound plane ideally we want to identify. The key thing is that we want to make sure that ultrasound plane is not over the abdominal aorta, but rather over the IVC. This 2D picture here shows the IVC here in long axis. This is the right atrium, and then you see the hepatic vein here. When you want to, um, why we want to look at the diameter at a distance from two centimeters from the entrance of the, the right atrium is simply because of this right here. You can see that if you took your measurement here, you may falsely uh, increase the size of your IVC uh, because you're incorporating part of the hepatic vein. And finally, M mode essentially is just, again, that dagger of ultrasound over time. It gives you a clearer view of the IVC and potentially looking at the change in the diameter of that IVC over time in a still image. <clears throat> so this picture here is trying to, this video here is trying to show two different um, IVC examinations. The one on the left should highlight uh, a uh, patient who does not seem to have much change in the diameter of the IVC. So you can see here's the IVC, here's the hepatic vein, and this is the right atrium here. Notice uh, uh, anecdotally there's a pericardial fusion here. Uh, this and the patient may actually have some worsening signs as well. Um, but here, particularly focusing on the IVC diameter, you notice that the IVC diameter uh, is not changing very much on the respiratory cycle. And if we visualize this in M mode, so again, remember M mode is that dagger of ultrasound over time, placing it distal to this inlay here of the hepatic vein, so or approximately in this area, placing that over time and allowing us to see the change, you can notice that the diameter does not change very much. Well, let's compare that to the image here on the other side. So here, visually, we can see that we have an IVC that's rapidly changing diameter secondary to the respiratory cycle. So you can see here that, in fact, it is actually collapsing more than 50% um, as the patient uh, is, is uh, respiring. Using M mode, you can more clearly see this, and rather than having in a still image, you can see that here you have the maximal size of the diameter and then noticing that it dramatically decreases in size secondary to the respiratory cycle. So comparing the D-max versus the D-min or the maximal diameter to the minimal diameter, uh, you can get that percent change. <coughs> so it's important to realize that, the, again, uh, why are we looking at uh, the percent change uh, of the IVC diameter? Well, it tells us the essentially the pressure um, that's transmitted to the right atrium um, because, again, a higher pressure would be able to fight off that those pressure changes of the thorax uh, and then have a less of a change in the diameter compared to a lower right atrial pressure. So what you're looking for um, when you have a negative inspiratory breath, or, uh, inspiratory breath, excuse me, uh, right atrium should, filling should actually improve and your IVC diameter will decrease uh, since it's getting unloaded. The opposite occurs when you have positive pressure ventilation. So essentially, either way, whether it's positive pressure or negative pressure uh, breathing, uh, the key thing that you're looking for is the different phases of respiration causing a change in the IVC diameter. And when that change produces greater than 50%, uh, um, that correlates to a CVP of less than 5. If the diameter is greater than 2.5, and you see minimal respiratory variation, that correlates to a CVP of greater than 15. And I really find that this is the utility of this examination in determining the extremes of CVP. When you're uh, concerned about someone having a CVP or right atrial pressure less than five, uh, very good technique to, to uh, evaluate for that. Or on the flip side, if you're trying to evaluate someone who has a very elevated right atrial pressure or CVP, uh, this uh, modality is also very good for that. But in that gray zone of the uh, greater than five and less than 15 range, while this technique can help give you that number, Clinically, it's a struggle to what to do with that number since, again, trending CVP or looking at absolute CVP values does not seem to correlate very well with uh, fluid responsiveness. Very important to realize that when you're measuring the IVC diameter, you need to use the maximum diameter size achieved uh, during expiration in a spontaneously breathing patient and during inspiration in a mechanically ventilated patient. This uh, table here shows you the actual um, ranges. So if you have a very small IVC, um, uh, less than a half a centimeter, and it collapses, that's a very low CVP, zero to five. 
if your IVC is relatively normal in size, about 1.5 to 2.5 centimeters, but and collapses less than 50%, um, then uh, or greater than 50%, that's the CVP of 5 to 10. Uh, if you have a range of 1.5 to 2.5 uh, and your IVC uh, is uh, not collapsing more than 50%, that's 10 to 15. Uh, and if you have a dilated IVC of over 2.5 centimeters um, and you have a uh, basically minimal collapsibility, uh, that's a CVP greater than 15. Okay, great. So now I'm going to try to demonstrate uh, how to do this examination. We have a simulator here, and we'll try to demonstrate on that. We uh, always important, again, first thing I'm going to do is identify my indicator uh, here, shown here, um, 12 o'clock position. I see the fact that the indicator for the simulator is on, has it, has it on the right side. I'm going to place my probe, 12 o'clock position, aiming up at the nose. Important, again, every time we see the indicator, imagine this is your ultrasound plane coming out along that path of the indicator here. So this is that ultrasound plane coming in and crossing section. So now we place it initially at the sub xiphoid space, indicating aim at the 12 o'clock position. My first step when I look for the IVC is actually identifying the abdominal aorta, which is what I've done for uh, done right here. The abdominal aorta is usually exactly midline in the patient, um, and you want to identify that. Notice that it's uh, more pulsatile in nature, and the, probably the easiest thing is besides just the pulsatility is just to adjust your tilt evaluate it as you look into the heart and notice that the abdominal aorta itself falls away from the heart. There's no interaction with this going into the pericardium um, as well as with the liver. There's no involvement with this structure uh, with the liver. Now, after I've identified the abdominal aorta, I'll then try to uh, identify the IVC. Two techniques to be able to get the ultrasound plane into the IVC. One is to adjust your angle, more aiming towards the patient's right side. Uh, and that will bring the IVC into view. Um, another technique is to slightly just slide your probe to the patient's right hand side as well. Either technique you're looking for again now of, uh, evaluating for this other large vessel structure um, but now you see that it's integrated into the liver uh, and then you can also adjust your tilt to evaluate it as it goes into the right atrium itself. So it's always important again to have that indicator uh, identifying the abdominal aorta first uh, and then try to position the ultrasound plane more to the patient's right side to identify uh, the IVC.